Hello and welcome to Unit 5. This unit is all about setting up the IRPA Cloud Factory. We'll learn how to navigate through the bot store, how to set up your own test environment, how to install and deploy packages in your own test environment, how to create triggers and, and your input parameters, and finally, how to deploy and run the bots in the attended and unattended modes. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Feel free to follow along at your own pace. By now you've set up your IRPA trial instance and have logged into the IRPA Cloud Factory. From the homepage overview, you can see above the dashboard here that there is a tab for the bot store. Once you navigate to the store tab, you'll be able to see a list of all the bots that have been developed for various SAP applications and use cases. You can filter them down using this panel on the left, which allows you to filter for industries, lines of business, or SAP applications. Or you can search directly for what you want in the search bar here, which is what I will do. See if you can use the side filter to show only the bots created for SAP Business by Design or SAP Business One. Once I've found the bot that I want to use, I can navigate to the bot page and see that I'm presented with key information, like what the bot does, how its logic is structured, as well as any accompanying documentation and images that will help me understand how the bot works. Importing the bot package is as simple as clicking the Get button, and after a couple of seconds, the bot will be ready to import and deploy into your environment. Now that you've seen how to navigate through the bot store and get a bot from the store, I'd like you to try and find and get the sales order creation from local purchase order bot for the SAP application you plan on using for the duration of this course. Before we get to deploying the bot though, we need to create an environment first. So let's do that next. Creating an environment is a simple process in the Cloud Factory. And that's great, because it allows you to separate between bots you're developing, testing, and those that are running in a production environment. For our purposes today, we'll be creating a test environment to run our bot in. To do that, we'll navigate to the Environments tab. Since it's your first time, your environments list will be empty. We can create a new environment by clicking on either of the buttons that say New Environment. You can call your environment whatever you want. I'll call mine Open SAP and I'll make sure to select Test on the drop down menu. This sets it to a test environment. Great, the environment's been created. So from here, I can see that my environment provides me with the ability to set up everything I need to run the bot. From the overview screen, I can see what packages or bots I have deployed in this environment, which desktop agents are connected, which triggers have been set up to run the bots, as well as places to store environment variables, API keys, and set up alerts if the bot encounters an error. One thing you always want to make sure of is that your desktop agent is connected. The simplest way to do it is from the overview page. If you've set up your desktop agent to connect to your RPA trial tenant and have the Google Chrome extension enabled, you'll be able to see your agent in the list. Select it, and you're well on your way to running a bot. As an exercise, I'd like you to prepare your own production environment. To make it a bit easier, let's quickly run over the steps. From the Cloud Factory homepage, find the Environments tab, create a new environment, and make sure that you set it as a production environment during the creation process. Then, use the Environment Overview to connect your desktop agent. The next step in the process is to take the package we got from the bot store and deploy it to our test environment. My colleague Sergio will take it from here all the way to deploying and executing the bot. You're in good hands. Sergio, on to you. Hello everyone, my name is Sergio Fernandez, and I am Product Manager and Intelligent Processes in SAP for Small and Medium Enterprises. I will continue this unit for exploring and extending the workflow structure. Previously, my colleague Joseph presented how to create a new environment and how to acquire a new bot from the store. I will now continue explaining how to deploy a package and how to create a new trigger. After that, I will also do a demo where we will see together how to run the bot. Then, let's see it in the Cloud Factory how to do it. 
In the Cloud Factory, we can see the bot installed under the package tab. Here we have it with the name Business Document Extraction from Email. Now, let's deploy the package into the previously created environment. To do so, we need to navigate to Environments, click on the environment that we previously created, in our case, with the name of OpenSAP. And once we are here, we need to click on Add Package. Here, we should select the package that we want to deploy. Again, in our case, Business Document Extraction from Email, so I click on that, and after that, we should click Next. Now, the package is deployed in the environment. The next step for us will be to create a trigger. Um, in order to create a trigger, we can click here on three dots and click Add Trigger. We have three types of triggers. We have API-based trigger, where the bot is triggered, it means executed by calling an endpoint. We have also attended trigger type, where the end user will execute the bot manually. And we also have a scheduled trigger, um, where the body is executed according to a defined timing. In our case, the trigger type available for this bot is scheduled. So we select the schedule and we click OK. Let me start by the general details of the trigger. So first of all, we need to provide a name. So we can say open SAP. Click here, we will select main automation. The vast majority of the cases, we will always be selecting here the main automation as the automation to be executed. If we look at the bottom uh, of the schedule, so here we need to provide the timing conditions from Monday until Friday at 7 a.m. And now we need to look on the input parameters. Before we start looking in the input parameters in details, I will like to explain the details locally that we need to do before executing the bot because we will, need, we will need those steps as input here. So let me now go and start doing the steps locally. We have three steps to do locally. First, we need to create a root folder in our local machine. We should go to the defined location in our machine where we want to create the root folder for the bot. For example, here, I will be creating under my documents the root folder, and I will name it OpenSAP. Second, we need to download from the store where we originally obtained the bot a configuration file and place it within the folder that we just created. And in the RPA store, we see on the documentation part here um, the configuration file that we need to um, place in the folder. Please consider that other bots might have other configuration files, and we'll see this, for example, with this um, sales order creation, that there are actually two different configuration files. So here you will have two different documents. In addition, now that we are here, I would like to point to the technical certification document. I would recommend you having a look after you watch this part and before going into the hands of exercises. Um, I already downloaded the configuration file and I can quickly open it up because I, yeah, I want to present to you what it contains. The, this file contains rules for filtering the emails that the bot is using while reading the Outlook inbox. Um, for the third step, we need to go to our Outlook account um, where we need to create a folder where all the successful processed emails can be moved. Um, for my case, I have created already a folder with the name RPA OpenSAP. Before we go back to the Cloud Factory and start providing the input parameters, let me switch back to the folder uh, that we created before in our local machine. In our case, we created with OpenSAP because we need to ensure that the config file itself is within this folder. And now I will move the config file to the OpenSAP folder. Okay, now we have the right setup. We have the config file within the folder OpenSAP. Let's go back to the Cloud Factory, and here we need to provide the input parameters. So first, we need to start by the Outlook folder. Um, we, we saw that before. This is the folder in our Outlook account where the processed emails are moved. Um, I created with the name of um, RPA underscore OpenSAP. Second value is the root folder path. We need to provide here the path that we just saw before with the config file. You might have a different path. You need to provide this accordingly. And then the third value is the config extra file name. Now let's click on update. And now our trigger is created according um, to the values we provided before. I will at this point of time I will ask, I would like to ask you to repeat the same steps, but for a different bot. Um, if I go to my packages, please um, take in the sales order creation from local purchase order bot, um, go and obtain the bot from the store, deploy the package in the environment as well as create a trigger for the same. 
Um, and at the point where you're creating the trigger and you start to provide the input parameters, I would like to take it this together with you. And now let's look together the input parameters. The, the reason why I, I want that we look at this together is because of, for this board, which is going to be also used in later on in our course, uh, more from technical perspective, um, this board contains different input parameters. Um, and therefore, I would like that we look up together those input parameters. Let's start with the first input parameter, root folder path. It is exactly the same root folder as we had for the business document extraction to deliver. The reason for that is because typically the bot sales order creation from local purchase order takes the downloaded document from the other bot, from the business document structure from email. And therefore, they share the same folder structure. They are, they are having actually the same root folder. Again, here you might have, a, you might have created in a different, in a different path. The second input parameter, it is the tenant URL. Here we need to use either the SAP business by design or the SAP business one tenant that we have for our, for our open SAP course. Third input parameter, it is the config Excel file name. Um, as you might remember, I did not change the, by default, um, name of, of this file. Therefore, um, the name is config. The next um, input parameter is the business by design credential entry name. And here, um, we need to provide um, the Windows credentials that we have maintained. I will explain in a sec. After we look together the input parameters, I will explain how to create a Windows credential. And this Windows credential um, basically will be uh, provided here. The next, um, we have the sales order configuration file name. And this is, um, I pointed before, right? We, we have two different configuration files. The one that provided here with the name config. And here we have the second configuration file that I did mention before. Um, this configuration file contains certain rules for the sales order creation. Um, you can, again, download this uh, file from the store. For me, I also keep the default name. With, and lastly, we have, um, again, another entry name. And in this case, it's the business by design technical credential entry name. And here we need to first maintain in the Windows credential. And then once this is maintained in the Windows credential, we can specify here. So let's go and, and open up the Windows credential. We need to search for Windows credentials. Here we are. And here we need to click in Add a Generic Credential. Um, Internet or Network Address is the entry name in the input parameter. Since we have to add two different credentials, let me start with uh, the technical user. So I can say here, Open SAP Technical User. And username and password, as we saw in the preparation week, we have already defined technical user. The name is Java Boss. And the password is Welcome One. We click OK to save it. And now we go to the second credential, which is the business user. For the business user, uh, similar steps. I can say here, uh, um, yeah, open SAP business user. And the username and password, um, again, in the preparation week, we have explained how to create your own business user. Therefore, please enter your own business user here. Uh, for me, I can simply mock this with test one and work on one. Now, if we go back to the trigger, we need to provide the credential entry name. Now we click on create, therefore we save and create the trigger. Now that the trigger is created, we could wait for the trigger to start when the timing conditions are met, or we can run the bot as well as ad hoc. Um, basically, we can click here on the three dots and run now. However, we have not maintained the configuration file, therefore let's wait until the Hanson exercise where there we can execute the bot. At this point of time, I want to thank you for your time, and I would like to hand over to Jerome, who will be covering the same content, but for the SAP process automation. Thank you.